and welcome back to Resident Evil Revisited. We've given you like a couple of days, all right? This, you got a couple of days off, but we're back at it like a bad habit. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Hayley Show. How are you, Hayley? Hey, I'm good, thank you. Feeling good about this one? We'll see. Damn, she's giving nothing away. Uh, the one and only D Spawn joins us once again. Hello. D Spawn, I feel. I feel better than the last one. Mm. And of course, rounding no, out our no. group, the one and only Nick, aka Shotgun McPain. Nick, how are you? Feel feeling worse than the last one. So and what 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 do I mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean by that? We'll find out now. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> so, Resident Evil 4. If you don't know what Resident Evil Revisited is, uh, Resident Evil Revisited is our daily, weekly show uh, leading up to Resident Evil 8, where we go through and play every single Resident Evil numbered game, including Code Veronica, which is what we did last week. Uh, and then we end up ranking the characters, ranking the weapons, rank ranking the locations. And uh, yeah, we just have a, a good old time talking Resident Evil evil if you do enjoy the show i always sat at the end of the show but obviously some of you are not getting there we don't really care about views but we do care about engagement so if you are someone watching this please be sure to like comment and if you're new to the channel make sure you slap that subscribe button because it means a lot to us guys resident evil 4 a game that i would say is definitely well regarded amongst non-core resident evil fans i think some people have it in their top five games of all time I think those people have probably not played this game again since that first time they played it. Um, Deespawn, we'll start with you. Uh, what did you think of Resident Evil 4 on a top level? Um, I've, I personally think it's definitely worth like the, the plaudits it gets as being like one of the... like I want to say like it was regarded as like a game changer for the series, I think. And I think you can definitely see where it's like taken some of the points. From this game and it's run with it in future ones uh all in all i had a lot of fun with this game um some bits were a bit mm, okay but yeah all in all it was really good uh and yeah i'm excited to deep dive into it and see what everyone else thinks about it nick what about yourself where, where did you fall on this one on a top level so this one of course is the one that i started off with this is the one that introduced me into resident evil and I had a, I had a, a very much a high uh, bar for it, you know, when I was, you know, growing up. But I think, like, upon further glance, like, and playing these games back to back to back, I think it has the opposite problem that Code Veronica has, where the gameplay, I think, still pretty rocks pretty fine. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's a pretty, pretty damn fun time. The, everything else about it in terms of like the, the story just doesn't hit it, it doesn't even hit as like a singular piece like it, it's what it's trying to do where it's where it's trying to be a self-contained thing where i think that some games later on do really well i think this does not very good at all yeah uh hayley this is your first time ever seeing resident evil 4 uh and it's a game that i haven't shown you in the 10 years we've been together mm -hmm. Can you now see why? Yeah, I can. It wasn't hot trash, so it wasn't no, terrible. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. But I am in no rush to ever see it again. <laughs> to be honest, I get. I don't. I don't play the games, but from a pure like. I don't know, observing standpoint, the story has not captivated me at all. If this was a book, I wouldn't have finished it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like. I feel like we'll go into a bit more detail, but everything that the previous games do well, this game forgets. I can see where it probably did mm -hmm. like miracles for the gaming industry and where games went because of this, so I can understand why it's held in such high regards, but as you said, looking back on it and then playing it back to back to back, I don't think it stands well against the others for certain aspects. Yeah. Um. Again, people people give me a hard time a lot about my opinions of Resident Evil 4, and I have gone on record of saying that I think it's the Resident Evil game that ruined Resident Evil for what we get going forward, 5 and 6. Um, you will see that when we get to those games. The thing that breaks my heart the most about this game is you have a cast of characters in Leon and Ada, starting off of characters well-known to the Resident Evil universe, and these are the, this is the first time you ever see those two characters again since Ada has fallen to her demise in Resident Evil 2 
and there isn't even a mention of it. it this game was so designed to be a... It, it's called Resident Evil 4, so it could sell copies, but it was so designed as a standalone game of like, don't worry about anything that comes before this. Not a single thing. Don't worry about viruses. Don't worry about characters. Don't worry about who Leon is. None of it. None of it is referenced. None of it is spoken about. And it breaks my heart as a Resident Evil fan. Again, when I first played this game, like everybody, I absolutely loved it. Like it was, it was the game of all games. What, like Haley said, what it does for the gaming industry and what it did to t over the camera uh, shoulder and. Even just some of its uh, quick time events, all of that stuff that we see now in games, even to this day, right? It just doesn't. It doesn't hold up well as a good Resident Evil game, in my opinion. Like I understand that we have, we all have our differences when it comes to Code Veronica, right? But you can understand why that makes a good Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. Nothing about this makes a good Resident Evil game. And I understand some people come at me and always like, oh yeah, but it evolved. It evolved. It, it evolved in all the wrong ways then, if that's what we call this evolving, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I agree with you, Nick, where it comes to gameplay, a pure gameplay experience, I would think this, this is the best of non-remake games. Like, I don't think that's even arguable, like, at the moment. I think in our playthrough. So it's better than it's better than Code V, uh, it's better than Zero, and it's better than One, by a mile, when it comes to mm -hmm. gameplay, of, of enjoying picking up a controller and playing the game. That This is the best game for that. Mm -hmm. But it loses its heart and soul as a Resident Evil game, in my opinion. Please See, interject. I, I think that, for me, I, I wouldn't even say it's the best I would say it's the most different and the most accessible. It is the most anybody can pick up and play. The reason that games like RE Remake and RE Zero didn't get the love that it deserved and you know sp suffered poor sales was because it is the tank controls. It is the these things that are so daunting. Where this is a fun time. Like the, everything about this gameplay is a fun time. But it, like you said, it is not Resident Evil. I, I don't think uh, so. Yeah, go on, this No, I'm gonna say yeah. It's very much an arcade shooter rather than yeah. a Resident Evil game. Like the idea of popping heads off and taking on like a swarm of enemies coming at you. It it feels more like a time crisis or like one of those kind of like first person shooter games than it does a Resident Evil. Saying that, the gameplay that you get from it on its own, like you said, is fantastic. Um, but it just doesn't fit in well with the world of Resident Evil. Uh, and I think there's a massive disconnect. And as you say, it does like it seems like it was a conscious change on their behalf Definitely. to like move into a completely different direction, which we'd then seen in five and like five and six. Yeah, uh, and obviously seven took a completely different direction from there as well. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think gameplay-wise, on its own, is great in a Resident Evil world. Terrible, and the story is barely hanging on in the, some instances. The, I. I haven't played Resident Evil 4 in a really long time. Like, uh, since it come to Xbox 360, I guess, would be the last time I played mm -hmm. it. And playing through this, I was just like, wow. There's not, the notes are not strong. The story's not strong. The only cutscenes are strong are later in, in the game, in my opinion, which we'll get to. It just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. And they get... People that I hope people watch this and really understand where I'm coming from because I don't think I ever convey it very well when I'm when I'm on the stream and people are teasing me because I'm too focused on other things. But like, go back and play any play Resident Evil One, play Resident Evil Two, and then try and compare either of those two games to this. It's night and day difference in my opinion. Mm -hmm. To be fair though, we were streaming as we have done all of the Resident Evil games. Twitch.tv so slash mcfixer. <laughs> and there have been a couple of people that jumped in the Twitch chat that haven't seen your streams yeah. before were only searching for Resident Evil 4 gameplay. Yes, they love and it. And out of some of those, I think there were at least three or four that said, do you know what, thank you so much for reading the notes. I've played this game several times and I have never picked one of these things up. <laughs> I've never yeah, read it. And to it. be honest, yeah. it didn't make any difference whether you read them or didn't. Nope. <laughs> it was, they weren't very, I, very I think informative the thing, The thing that really frustrates me the most about this was... Playing A does separate ways, which we'll get to right at the end, gives you more context on a lot of things, and that mm -hmm. wasn't even included in the, the the game when it first released, 
which is like, it was a clear thing of like, all right, we need to add content to this game to sell it again. And we should probably fill in some of the gaps that are just totally missing. And uh, it just, it, uh, I was so, when I was playing it, I was, it was so mind numbing. And so how I was expecting to feel for five and six, especially six, I was like, <laughs> I, I'm dreading, I'm dreading playing six. Having to replay that game from start to finish is going to be the biggest slog of my life. But honestly, playing through this, I was like, the beginning part, oh yeah, meeting Leon again and just enjoying it. I suppose it's perfect time to get into the plot. So let's, let's do that because um, it will help. US government agent Leon S. Kennedy is on a mission to rescue Ashley Graham, the US president's daughter who has been kidnapped by a mysterious cult. We'll stop, we'll stop there so then we can get to the first cut scene, which is obviously Leon turns up in a car with these two people that have no context. You're, you're, they're just there. They're talking in uh, their native language and then sort of taking the mickey out of the American. Um, they add nothing to the game. They had nothing to the game. They, there's, there's, there is nothing. There's, why could he not dro turn up in his own car? Why could he not have turned up in a plane, a motor, a, a, see Hunnikan that for in person? Like, just add to the reason of why this is here. Like, there's no reason for it. I feel like you devil's advocate argument because I do largely agree with you, but I think devil's advocate argument. You could say that it adds to the overall opening of the the tension of the, the these two guys that you meet, and then the, the you know like the these villagers basically take them away. But I think just base story wise, they do not. But well, just playing devil's advocate, they could have been like I don't know colleagues of Leon though, couldn't they? That he could have gone to right. find them with or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. It could have been. It could, it could have been, been like a Brad situation. Previous team. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been yeah. that whole thing of like the alpha team that went in beforehand uh, and they went missing, so he went in after. Just and I think that I think that's that's a thing that this game does a lot, honestly, is like just provides characters to provide characters. Yep. Mm. Uh, the thing that just frustrates me is the fact of like you're meant to believe that Leon is the top guy. Right. Like they mm -hmm. you they give you no context. Of yeah. why Leon is the top guy. All we get throughout this entire game from from Wesker, spoilers, um, is don't forget he survived Raccoon Silly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure more people than just Claire, Leon, and uh, I suppose Claire, Leon, Chris, Ashley, but, but Carlos, uh, Carlos, <laughs> um, Mikau, I guess, technically, yeah. maybe, kind of. We don't know. We, we only shot him. We don't know he's dead. Like, yeah. it's more than just those people that survive Raccoon City. Like, mm. why are we pretending that, like, we need more context of, like, six years later this game takes place after Resident Evil 2. two. two. Yeah, again, two, it's weird. Yeah. It's free, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, after, well, I suppose... I, mean, I wonder how. Doesn't really make any difference, I wonder how. Well, after Raccoon City blew up. Yeah, it's still. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's still the same, same day. Six same, years. Yeah, six yeah, same yeah. time period, either way. Yeah, six years after, right? And I just think what we've just left Leon. Even if you're thinking back to the OG games, rookie cop, like what a disservice to a character that done such a great job of like winning people over. You give him this new look. I love the look. I think. I think mm -hmm. it matures him really well. And then it just sort of throws him in. Like, why does he not... If this is the US government, the US government have sent you in, why does he not come in on a chopper with... And you could have then played... That right. could have played back in to why something happens mm -hmm. with a chopper. Like, there's so many yeah. moments in this game that just frustrate me to my core where I'm like, it doesn't... It, there's no payoff. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Just, and uh, even... Even when you add the context in games that are spinoffs, like like Dark Side Chronicles, yeah, yeah, where it's like they kind of hint at like, oh well, he became he had to become a U.S. government agent because if he didn't, they were gonna test on Sherry, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just and it's such a but then weird Dark Side Chronicles is so again we're we're not playing those games for this this run yeah, 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 but like those stories, both those Wii titles that came out, which fill in like. They go through like Resident Evil 2 story, Resident Evil uh, 3, and Resident Evil 4. I don't know if it's 3 actually. Definitely 4 though. Because there's like, yeah, there's, some, there's some yeah. bit for, with you and Krauser, right? Yeah. But all of that stuff feels like just a dream of like mm -hmm. Leon's amping up. <laughs> it's like Leon's telling a story to somebody. Like, I know well, we haven't played those games, so we'll leave those out. But they, they add a little bit more context to things, which. <laughs> 
it doesn't really it doesn't do anything though. for yeah, the story. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really. It doesn't really. Um, he travels to a nameless ru- uh, ruin, ru- rural, thank you, village in Spain, where he encounters a group of hostile villagers who pledge their lives to Los Lin- Limonados. Have I said that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The cult that kidnapped Ashley. All right, so the, the whole beginning part of the game I actually enjoy. I do enjoy mm-hmm. Leon going into the into the first the first cabin um, and approaching the civilian. He doesn't know who he is. He's just being his normal self, and obviously that that guy then attacks you. And I enjoy what they do there, which is is super mm-hmm. instantaneous of like learn the mechanics of what we're playing here. Like learn to shoot. Oh, good, we can now kick people. No, good, you can jump out mm-hmm. of windows. Like it, it very much sets you up of like. This is what to expect from Resident Evil 4 as a game. I think it's interesting, though, because I know that quite a lot of people have an affinity for Leon because of this game. But I feel like the only things to like about Leon in this game is his ability to jump out windows and kick people. I feel like as his personality, it's really dry in this game. He's like really flat. I feel like they've kind of Mm. taken all of the personality that he once had, you know, as a rookie cop in Resident Evil 2. And they've just kind of stripped him down to look the same but now he can do backflips and stuff. You know, it's they, like... They definitely they definitely made him an action movie protagonist just with some yeah. of the lines in here. It just, it's just specifically you are an action movie protagonist. You don't have mm-hmm. any depth. You're just there to serve to be a line, you know? <laughs> like, Yeah, I do feel like the, the, they tried to write uh, like him and uh, Ashley's story specifically, like try and have a connection between them. But it, I don't know if it's just the delivery from the actors or what, but it just came across as a little bit flat. I don't have a problem with the the voice acting in this game at I all. Think, like, I think, I think, um, I think the voice acting is actually pretty good in this game, if, in my really opinion. Um, I don't think it's. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's like the top top voice acting we'll ever get. And I definitely think. I think it was. Um, oh man, who was it that voiced um, Paul Mercer? I think the voice mm-hmm. Leon. Um, I definitely think. He does a great job of still still talking in a way that you'd expect a younger person to speak. And I, I, I agree with you. Like Ashley, I remember Ashley being so annoying in this game. Like, but playing it through this time, I was like, oh, you weren't that bad, to be honest with you. The, the only there's only a couple of moments where she just doesn't shut up and she's repeating mm-hmm. the same VO line, which is something mm-hmm. obviously if they were to modernize and remake, I think she would still talk a lot, because in the scenario she is in. She should be screaming and shouting, but she yeah. should be screaming and shouting more than just Leon, help! Like it, it should be more mm-hmm. than just that. And I think that's something they could definitely build upon. You should go into voice acting. That was pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> um, absolutely nailed it. The one thing I will say about Ashley, and again, it's probably just a um, a kind of like a shortcoming of the game and when it released. But how could they not program her to use ladders? How does she not know how ladders work? See, well, you gotta, she's supposed to be twenty. She got to be catch. Or caught, you know? You've gotta be caught. You gotta get caught, yeah. I mean if you're the president's daughter, I get it. You know, you get certain privileges and all, but it's like, still a so, okay, the reason she's a ladder. I'll tell you why. Oh oh I'm playing devil's advocate here, right? Because I do try and defend the game. I guess if you think about this in a case of they are rushing everywhere. Everywhere they are trying to get to, they are rushing. And I suppose what would have been cooler is if we got a cut scene of like some explosion happened and it blows Ashley off a ladder and then Leon caught her and then going forward that would happen. That would like something like that would more make it make more sense. The, the only thing I can think in my head is like scared of heights. Something like that. Know. Just give me something of like yeah. why you're adding it to the gameplay. Like I, cut her skirt. Obviously. I'm, <laughs> ob- obviously. I mean maybe it's like a a, a sur- survival horror narrative survival horror game that we get down the line and it's like she doesn't know how to swim she doesn't know how to climb ladders you know you know ladders at 20 i I think you'll be i suppose there's no ladders in the white house but yeah 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 i I guess she's she's very sure you know she doesn't know how to climb a ladder if it was carpeted stairs, she'd be fine. But when it's a wooden ladder, she gets really confused. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. We'll carry on with the the plot real quick. Um, uh, the villagers were were once simple farmers until becoming infected by a mind controlling parasite known as Laz Pelagus. So I do think the the one powerful scene they do have is when you get to the village. I do think that scene and that area 
is done actually quite well. You do get over over encumbered by a lot of enemies um, mm -hmm. out there. And I do I enjoy that part. It is sort of the only part of the game for me where it feels it's not survival horror still, it's still action. It's still mm -hmm. an action game. But I feel like but they also, balance balance it appropriately of like Yeah. Run shoot, 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 shoot. Oh god, you're out of ammo. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do right now? And it's like run mm -hmm. into a building, find the shotgun, run around and grab grab all these items. I feel like this this area is actually done quite well. It brings those hints of claustrophobia that the original games yeah. had. And I think that's that's something that this does somewhat throughout, but sometimes in certain places it's like, okay, there's just too many enemies here rather than, oh, I'm actually in a bad way. Yeah, mm. I, I think it also does that. It, it builds upon the survival horror in terms of like, it adds a little bit more context to things that you would do in real life, which is like mm -hmm. barricading doors and yep. like jumping out of a window that would lead to a roof. Like I think like those those are the things of like you go back and play Resident Evil One and Two OG, especially like you see a gun on the shelf, you're like, oh, I would grab that gun. In this game, it's like there's a shotgun. You grab the shotgun. Like it, I like this area. I like the village, the villagey area, mm -hmm. um, but. Still, it just doesn't add enough for me um, as you progress through. But um, yeah, when uh, while in the village, Leon is captured by its chief. Uh, how do you have to pronounce his Bitores name? Bitores Mentes, and injected with Las Pragas. So this is where um, obviously Leon gets captured after looking for Ashley in in the world in the town. Um, and obviously you meet a, a character which is coming up in the next line dial in the uh, plot but I don't f I never uh, I'll be honest I never feel like Las Plagas is actually that menacing ever mm. I, I get that they've taken over this, 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 this these farmers I understand that and obviously you progress and progress and they've taken over a lot of people but I just never it never really worked for me in terms of the T virus makes sense. It's it's gonna turn the whole entire world into into zombies, right? Um, obviously, tyrant like seeing the tyrant, and then we we've, we've spoken so much in depth about like the animals and stuff like that in Resident Evil. This virus just feels so boring. Yeah, well, it's a parasite, isn't it? Well, you know what I mean. This yeah. this world world ending thing that could happen just feels so boring. Like there's no. It just doesn't. It doesn't make sense. And you brought it up a couple mm. of times, which is like we're chasing after Ashley. But there's even a line of dialogue where he's like, "I'm going to send you back to America so I can destroy it," sort of thing. So yeah. why are they mm -hmm. following you and so trying to what? bring you back if they're trying to let you go back to America anyway? <laughs> I don't know, it's uh, a bit of a... That's that's the thing that did it for me. Is just like, why are you telling him the plan? Like, just yeah. let him go back to America, and then boom, you can take over the world. Like, yeah. yeah. I just I don't, open the I don't. front door, turn him around, send him on his way. Twenty minute game sorted, done. <laughs> it, it's a very like action movie based virus yeah. or, pl or parasite. Yeah. Like it, it I'm going feels to kill like, you. Yeah, it feels all right to you. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's such a shame though for a game that again it's held in such high regard. It's just a shame that we get such a a B. A B story, a B paradise, yeah. a parasite, a B virus, or whatever. Mm. Like just, it, just with what you have here, and even some of the areas you have here, this game could be so cool. Um, but we just never, we never really get to experience it to its full extent. Well, uh, and so, on, please. something that's touched upon earlier that that I don't think we touched upon here is just like the the lack of of even trying to adhere to the originals you know we get umbrella dies in a text in a text yeah. bubble like yep. <laughs> you know like that yeah. this company that you've like it is built up at the end of resident evil 3 we're or resident code veronica like we're getting we're going to take down umbrella and then oh no it's just taken by the government which makes sense like actual overall world wise where it's just like oh this messed up in raccoon city but i think as in terms of a a, a plot device it's like okay uh umbrella's gone uh you just you, it, uh, died off screen and uh, that's because that's because of the three or four games in total that came before exactly. it right we're just like exactly we don't want you to know have to have played or know 
any of those games, but I think it would have been quite easy. Like, Umbrella bad guys, we get it. Like, yeah. right. you could have kept that. You could have made some sort of cutscene to start the game with that didn't have to be like a previously on. Well, it just every... needed to give enough information for people to understand. As you said, Umbrella, bad. Every <laughs> you know, like... game yeah. until this game, including Code Veronica, starts with a set piece to set the tone of the game. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. this game. This game starts, yeah. with, like you just said, uh, Nick, with dialogue. With yeah. read this dialogue of what's just happened. It's like... Did we lose half the budget on the fourth game? And I think that's what frustrates me more because this game made all the damn money in the world. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but Resident Evil, like, Cove Runner had, like, this this dope start where she drops a gun and shoots barrels. And Resident Evil 1 obviously has the dogs chasing you into a mansion. And Resident Evil 0 has a train that gets derailed. And, and this one gets dialogue. Just the starting is just so, ugh. When I think it, it adds insult to injury, like if if it was just like, oh, Umbrella is still like we're, we were we were you know like still building up. No, like we were at the end of Code Veronica, we were going to take down Umbrella, yep, but yeah. no, they had to kill them off. Like I feel like that's what adds insult to injury is like we were going to that big battle and then it just didn't happen. Mm. Well, we were gonna get that's... the big battle between Chris and Wesker and obviously Claire mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. What we get instead is Africa and Chris and Boulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- that's the thing. Like every game so far, the ending to each game has always been the case of like the character. I was like, right, we survived that. We need to go take down Umbrella. And it felt like every game was building up to all of the characters coming together to take on Umbrella. And then, as you say, it's like, oh, they must they must have done it because there's a text line that said they've got taken down. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, it's just by the government. Like it's not even by like. <laughs> could you imagine like tax a evasion? Cut... Who knows? Could you imagine? Like, yeah, a it's cut literally scene that <laughs> like, of Leon like... sitting down on his couch, right? And this this just set the tone of like Leon sits down on his couch, turns on the TV, news starts. Bum bum bum. Yeah. Umbrella taken down in in. Duh, 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 duh. And then, boom, boom, phone rings. Looks down at his mm-hmm. phone. It's the president. Boom! Mm-hmm. Cut it opens. Like that's how you start a right. damn game. Like right. it's not yeah. you don't start a game with just text and just boring you off the bat and like no context of why this like that just think about what I just said. Like that that would have added so much to mm. to what the game is. And you can't sit and go, oh yeah, but this game was made in whatever. No. Even Resident Evil OG one had cutscenes mm-hmm. and like and built tone and, and a live action stuff. Like whatever you wanted to do for the time, we could have made it work in this, and they just they just never do. It just ah, oh, it's so I think so. It's clear to see that they wanted to take a step away from what the original games 100%. were. One hundred percent. But I feel like they wanted to leave just the little ounce of Resident Evil DNA in it, so that they could call it Resident mm-hmm. Evil Four. And it's like yeah. just like let's use well known characters. Let's introduce some puzzles. The puzzles in this is not are not puzzles in comparison to the mm. the other games no. at all. It's a, literally there just so that they can call it a Resident Evil game, you know. And it feels like that's pretty much the theme throughout the game. It's it's just adding these little drops, just so that the OG fans can hate on us but not take us to court or whatever. You know, you not can't take to, take to court, court, but, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like they can't say this is not like Resident Evil, you know. But I don't know. It, I feel like they should have. I don't know, rebranded it. It almost feels like the original games were like oh, their section. 100%. This five and six could be its own trilogy, and we've already got seven, eight, and nine that are going to be there. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like, why keep the number going? Because numbers sell. Yeah, I numbers, know. Yeah. That's why. That, we know that. It, it's frustrating, but that's, that's the truth. That's the truth of it. Uh, he finds himself held captive with Louise Serra, a former Los, uh, Los Inimiados in researcher. Uh, the two work together to s- escape, but soon go their separate ways. This cutscene, again, I don't think this does Lewis any favours. I think it's some of the most boring and ba- banned conversation. Why would you, after figuring out who this person is, would you escape? And doesn't make sense again. The villager comes to kill you mm-hmm. when you're very clearly being captured for a reason, and the person is controlling the villager. So why would he come? It doesn't make sense. Like <laughs> in the like, you're telling me that this 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 plague that's just been put into my my character into Leon that is so so crazy powerful has now 
sent one of their minions who he is controlling, so he knows what this, this, this person's doing, but then tries to kill them even though you want him to survive. Like, it just... Ex- yeah. If you explain it to me, someone explain it to me why why this happens. Like it happens because there needs to be story. Not not like yeah. it would have made more sense. Mm. The big cheese comes in, right? And the big cheese is just like, I've got my orders, but I don't want you two to live because um, I'm because just my because space. Well, b- b- yeah, <laughs> you're whatever. threatened. Know, threatened, yeah. you might become head of security or threatened. Mm. So I'm gonna squash you like a bug. But no, you yeah. you don't get that. The big cheese comes and sees you for the first time, beats you up. Which okay, cool. Locks you back up. Then you get tr- almost get killed. Some just it doesn't make sense. Yeah, th- this this game is a lot of there's. It seems there's a lot of like set pieces that are and the story secondary to them, rather mm-hmm. than it being the story drives the set pieces. There is a definitely a, a large amount that are just like this will be cool. How do we make this work within the story? Rather than how do we make these story beats cool? And I think it's just a writing style that just didn't work in this instance. I understand that Resident Evil doesn't make sense. Period. Like, I get that I'm the dumb, crazy fan that just seems to enjoy these really dumb stories about zombies. I understand that. But at least I will stand there and say, as much as we all didn't like 3, 3 made sense on the the surface level from start to finish. Like mm-hmm. there are some, there are some moments, and the characters are not fleshed out. But compared to this, three looks like a damn masterpiece in storytelling, in my opinion. Like I, it just, ah, oh, it's 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 so frustrating. What do you guys think of Lewis as a character? Um, this is who you're introduced to. Hey. I could not care less. I didn't care that he was here. I didn't care that he was alive. I didn't care what happened to him or anything. I just, I don't know. I had no relation with him at all. <laughs> I like him and uh, him and Leon's back and forth. But other than that, like as as an overall character, eh. yeah. Again, it, he's as we said earlier. He's like he's just, he's a character there to progress set pieces. Uh, he's he could have been literally anyone else in this game, and it wouldn't have changed a thing. The best thing about him was his waistcoat. He's a cool waistcoat. He's a cool waistcoat. It is pretty cool. Yeah, but it's. <laughs> Even oh, we'll get there. Let me get, let me get then before I before <laughs> I just start for, being frustrated. Um, held in a church. Uh, sorry, Leon finds Ashley is being finds out Ashley's been held in a church and rescues her. They both escape from the church after Olsen Sadler, uh, leader of Los Ludimados, reveals his plans to use the last plagues they injected into Ashley to manipulate her into injecting the pr- the president sorry the president of the united states with a sample once she returns home allowing sadler to begin his conquest of world of uh, conquest of the world again so when you captured ashley the first time or the second time or the third time why did you not just take her back to america mm-hmm. like i, I mean I could solely think that they were just waiting for the egg to hatch, but again, just playing devil's advocate there. I guess, okay, but what were they going to do? The thing they needed to get the egg out of her was where they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I uh, just add in a little bit of a Please. spoiler that you only find out if you play separate ways with Ada, and it's one line from Wesker that tells you that the villagers are trained to um, get rid of any intruders on site. That's their main goal. So if they're not told to do anything Mm -hmm. else, they are to eliminate Mm. any intruders. That's one sentence that Wesker tells Ada on a piece of game that you never have to play that basically makes everything else in the original game make sense if we were only told that in a note or in a piece of dialogue or anywhere at the beginning of the Resident Evil 4 The notes in this game are (laughs) trash. You know, like last time I was like... Oh yeah, like they're okay, but no. This game, the notes are absolutely trash, and that 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 would be okay if the story was great. But because the story is just absolutely horrendously bad, in my opinion, the notes are just like you need something to mm. give us context of what is going on in this world, and we just don't get it. I don't even like honestly like what I'm worried about with the remake. I don't even think that personally like you could make this story good. Co-Veronica. Even like 
They have they, to mix they, in Code Veronica. They have they to. Had to Exactly. Well, that's the thing is like with with remakes that, you know, are kind of subverting expectations that we've had recently. Like, I, f I hope that we kind of get that with four remake that kind of just like, oh, no, Umbrella's still here or uh, this. But this is what's happening. Um, and I think like the, the Los Illuminados is just so weak. And like, I think Sadler is really weak. Like, it's just like just as as like, why is this happening? Like, why is this mm -hmm. the, the MacGuffin that we're doing right now? You know? When people talk about how much they love Resident Evil 4, I must admit, as you said, if they played it back again, I think they would find that the thing they fell in love with, even with nostalgia, was the gameplay. Because it yeah. was so revolutionary at the time. Um, I think that a lot of people that would, you know, die on the, their hill or whatever for, for Resident Evil 4, I think if they replayed it, as we have as well with the other Resident Evil games, I think it would make them review some of their original opinions. Definitely. It's, but yeah. Do you know what? Now I'm I'm thinking about the church scene, and obviously the church scene is you rescue, you do a puzzle, which is a really annoying puzzle. Haley got it first time, but it's a frustrating puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. It's not smart. It's not. It's just if you're color blind, you can't even do the damn puzzle. Like, mm -hmm. like it's just a bad puzzle in my opinion. But you get actually, you come out. Sadler is standing there with a bunch of his minions who then try to shoot you with arrows. Yeah. So what happens? If those arrows kill Ashley. Right. You, you kind of like yeah. negate your plans. <laughs> like yeah. the game ends, I, but you're the hero. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like if you, if you think about this game at any point, you're going to be disappointed. Like that's the thing is <laughs> oh, like, yeah. you think about this game at any point, even the, the, the smallest of dialogue lines, yeah. you know, it's, it leaves things, plot holes everywhere. And that's yeah, I, I think I personally think this is the worst story. <laughs> yeah, well, get it's definitely we'll one of those where we'll you should there. have left the logic in the in the car at the beginning, mm. and that's it, and just go in with an empty head. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Uh, they both escape the church after Olsen Sladler. Uh, yeah, reveals his plan for World Congress. After killing Mendez, Leon and Ashley uh, try to take refuge in a castle. But are attacked by more uh, Los Inmados under the command of uh, Sadler. Another Salazar. Salazar, sorry, of oh, Salazar. Uh, we have to talk yeah, about Salazar. Person. Thank you, thank you. We've also missed a massive section. Me who's Mendez me must be the big cheese, right? Did I miss? Did I miss yeah, a massive Mendes. section? Mendez is the big cheese. No. Mendez is a big guy, uh, and you also oh, missed yeah. the boat section. Oh, you're right. We need That's to talk right. about the lake. Don't even touch it on this one, yeah. You have to talk about the lake. Uh, well, what? it's another bad boss battle. <laughs> yeah, it's just not I think it's fun. fun. I no, it's not it's, fun. What's fun yeah, about yeah. it? Like, it's not challenging. It's, it's not hard. Yeah. It doesn't. It it it. There's one line of uh, uh, like a piece of paper that like warns you about it at the start. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just it doesn't add anything. Like. Boss fights are meant to be fun and engaging and make you feel super badass when you beat it. Like, this doesn't. And and you've built Leon up as, like, one-man army to go in and get the right. president's daughter, and you give him a lake monster to fight that he then throws bolts at. Mm -hmm. I'd argue, though, like, to play, again, to play devil's advocate, I think that the... the, the it's It's the thing we talk about with the other... Uh, games where you kind of have oh this parasite is infecting other things besides these villagers and this is what it can do to a a lake like a Nessie type uh, it kind of adds that that little bit of mystique there but I think I think context wise I think story wise you're giving it dumb, way too much credit it, I like yeah. what you're saying it just needs yeah. to be in the game <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> it needs to be I'm... written or spoken about or something I don't know to be honest, give credit where yeah. credit's due. I haven't thought of it like that, which was like, oh, they were testing the 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 parasite on something else, or or just they were dumping, like they were dumping yeah. like tox toxins and just you know. yeah, and then this. What's my head canon, anyways? Yeah, yeah. But that would be a good link into the previous games if there was some dialogue or a note or something that kind of told us that that was the case. Right. Yeah, yeah, I just got oh, there's a giant monster in the lake. Like, when you go across it, you're gonna fight it. It's like okay, yeah. cool, great, fine, thank you. I think it, 
it's the same for any time an animal pops up in this game. There's like, there's no real explanation of why they're bad mm -hmm. all of a sudden. What animals uh, are in this game? The dogs. There, there are the, dogs as well. The, oh yeah! yeah, I forgot about the wolf, the wolf dog looking thing. The crows. That if you yeah. kill them, there's gold. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, also, we'll get into it in a second, but Salazar's henchmen. Just no explanation of what they actually are. But I kind of like that. Like, oh, mm -hmm. the one... So, yeah, it's the mystique. We're getting to Salazar, and I think Salazar and his henchmen are the best thing of this whole game. Yeah. Like, they're the most enjoyable, they're the most fun, they are dumb, they are stupid, there is a sense of humour there that they try and bring out. Like, I actually like that part. They have a really cool cutscene as well uh, with the henchmen. But I think mm -hmm. having characters such as the henchmen especially, that are mystique... That are, but why did we not get a proper boss fight with them? Is the thing yeah. like t fighting mm. two of them at the same time? They're coming at us with their damn like whatever they have on them. We're shooting them with whatever we have. Like build upon that. No, instead you you get one of them. What happens to the first one? Uh, you fight him in a hallway. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, you're right. The first one you fight in a hallway, and the second one gets sucked up into into the Whatever monster that that becomes. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even remember that. Um, yeah, it gets <laughs> yeah. sucked up as well in, yeah. into it, the monster. One thing I will say, Salazar clearly takes inspiration from Alfred in Code Veronica with his laugh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> great laugh, though. Great laugh. Great. Yeah. I, li I like Salazar. I don't think, like, he's obviously not well fleshed out like any other characters in this, but he is one of the moments I was like, Hayley, Hayley, Hayley. I like this guy. This is like, that's my yeah. favorite. When we Him get to voting, mansion. Salazar's <laughs> my favorite character in this game. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> Like he is, like he's he's just he's dumb and he's stupid, but he's meant to be dumb and stupid. And mm -hmm. the way he reacts to when he, the knife gets thrown into his hand, like it's just like the it's the moment that would happen to any of us where you're like you sort of just turn slowly, like oh oh, <laughs> yeah. I better sort this out. Like it, it, you would have that moment. And yeah, no, they don't do a great job of building him up as a bad guy or anything like that. But he's just sort of there, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I like him personally, but uh, yeah. Um, where am I? After Killer Mendez, the big Thank cheese. Thank you. After Killer Mendez, uh, Leon and. Uh, wait, so Mendez is the big cheese, right? Yeah. So we need to talk yeah. about that. It must that. be the way that. So, yeah, you're that right. You're right. It is, it is. So we need to talk about that boss fight. How did you guys find it? Uh, fine. Um, I don't think it was at all challenging, uh, but it was it was just kind of one of those things of like. What difficulty? Did you play on? Uh, I've I've done both. I did easy and normal. So I've done that boss fight on normal and easy. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I found it fine. Um, again, like I say, not too difficult. Once you recognise the patterns, it's easy enough to avoid and uh, and like keep on the attack. I think this game does a really good job of. Well, I think the dodge mechanic that they introduced in this game is uh, is quite interesting and sometimes it's quite cool. It does make fights like this quite easy sometimes, though. Uh, whereas with previous Resident Evil, it was all about using the environments to move around and avoid everything. This was more of a case of just like, be fast enough on the dodge button and you'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I think it was okay. Uh, it was, um, I don't think it did a really good job of explaining how he had those abilities. Nope. Uh, at all. Just like, just a dude in a trench coat who could, in some instances, move really fast. Yeah. And then for no reason did it explain it in the boss fight. He was just a giant insect. There's quite like, a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> that mm -hmm. all of a sudden have you know the super soldier serum <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly but, it's yeah. it's I mean, a, all it's, all, a it's, not terrible. it's an action boss for action's sake like i i, I action horror uh mm -hmm. i should say um i do like the care i do like the character design of it and with the way he splits apart um i like the fact that it's kind of a claustrophobic area um, regardless, like it kind of adds to the burn and down bombs. The little, the, the little things they add to, like, oh, this is this is still kind of Resident Evil, mm -hmm. um, and I think that this is something that that it actually does quite well. Um, and that boss fight kind of it, it does come out of nowhere, but at the same time, it's like okay, like this makes sense, you know, here and there. But yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, I, I think it's fine as a boss fight. I think. Most of the boss fights in this game are fine, like mm. especially when you play it through on New Game Plus, like I did on normal, they become very easy um, because you've got souped up weapons and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I just yeah, it was it was fine. It was fine. I find that even when the bosses weren't easy, they were just bullet sponges. They weren't necessarily mm -hmm. challenging, yep. if you know what I mean. They just took up a lot of ammo. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. 
Uh, boom, 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 boom. Under the command of uh, Salazar, another uh, one of Sander's henchmen uh, who owns the castle, and the two become separated by Salazar's traps. Meanwhile, Lewis is searching for pills that will slow down Leon and Ashley's infection. As the samples of Las Plagas, uh, he brings uh, the two items to Leon, but is killed by Salazar, who takes the sample while the pill while the pills. That's what this says. While the pills to suppress the infection remain in Leon's hand. Mm -hmm. I think the moment that we've uh, kind of cut out there is obviously the horde mode, which I think Resident Evil created. Like, mm -hmm. Resident Evil created the first horde mode, which is be in an area and block in block all your doors and stuff like that. That was like the... I, I do like this area with Louise. I just don't think it adds enough to make it that interesting. Like, there's no big, big boss battle. There is no, like, yeah. you just you just stand there for a long time shooting things. And, yeah, it's kind of wasted. Again, though, I do think you need yeah. to remember that it was the first of its time. So yeah, yeah, Although yeah. it seems a bit lackluster now, it's only because your brain is trained for better horde modes of course. now. Whereas mm. back in the day, it would have been something different completely. Yeah. One thing I would say, though, in context, I think this one worked. Because, again, we talked about it in the Resident Evil 3 remake. Yes. How... The hard section in that was just ill-fitting, pointless, yep. and it was there to flesh out time. This actually contextually works really well, because like you said earlier, where the last Plagas are all basically just there to hunt you down and kill you, so you're stuck in a building, they're all going to hard you, as it were. Mm. I think it works really well in the context of it, and I think the execution is pretty good as well. Uh, it does feel quite tense near the end of it when they're all starting bursting through the windows and you're stuck upstairs yep. uh, and they're coming up with the ladders and everything. And I think the tension is definitely there and I think that is one of the few genuinely good moments for that kind of like tension building horror that it has in it. And it is genuinely kind of nerve wracking when you've got like 12 bullets and everyone's coming in through the window. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, think it works this, really well. I think this game does a great job of though ammo is definitely not scarce and things like that of just as you're about to run out of ammo, it drops you some ammo for one of mm -hmm. the guns that you have. And I do like that mechanic of, oh, thank God, which mm -hmm. is clearly there by design. That's not that's not happenstance. I think that's the right word I'm looking mm -hmm. for there. Like, that yeah. is there by design. And I think that is something they do a great job of, personally. Yeah, yeah I think I think the section, uh, to Despawn's point, is a great combination of the what the village section is. Like, it just brings everything that you know together and kind of turns it on his head. It's like, okay, now is where we're going to start to get a little bit different than what we've been doing for the past, you know, hour or so. Um, I think if you get a few um, level one plagas in there, uh, you're, you're in some trouble because uh, mm -hmm. definitely those those blades yep. will slash you like nobody's business um but yeah i do enjoy the the fact that you know like the looking at it and being oh like this is i see what they were trying to do i see what they were going for and what what games took from this going ahead yeah so again i think story wise if we had just had that little bit of dialogue in the actual base game instead of separate ways from wesker or from anyone that did tell you you know these these villagers that are you know plagued with the Las Plagas, they will attack on site with any outsiders. Yeah. I feel like it would have given this a bit more context story wise, um, mm -hmm. because again you do kind of feel like we've just escaped. They're chasing us, but why are they chasing us? I don't know. It's all a bit. It just tiny tweaks would have just made it a bit more coherent. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. fast forward to Lewis dying. I just felt no emotion here at all. <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't even say his name right, too. No. He's just like Lewis, and it's like, not, it's like American, no, right? he to <laughs> yeah, he told you it was Louise. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I just yeah. that whole moment, I'm just like, all right, let's move on. Well, he's dead. <laughs> the, again, yeah. the most upsetting part about that moment is he ruined that beautiful waistcoat. <laughs> It's now got yeah. a giant hole in the back. It does have a hole. It does have a hole. Uh, after this part, you play as Ashley, um, in something that i just hate i hate this whole moment of planners actually um you have no uh, you have no weapons or anything you can't fire mm -hmm. um you're just there to to sort of be there i don't know why they added it 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 just feels very ugh. do we have to like in yeah. my opinion um oh this is after you rescue her i know that's not just before you rescue her um what did you guys think 
Um, I'd agree. Like again, there's that moment where you obviously you're Leon at the boat above her and shooting all the guys that are coming in. Yeah, that bit was fine and yeah. quite fun. Uh, and then obviously from that point you take over her and you've got to go run through to get uh, like one of the door locks, uh, like one of the little symbols for the door. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's mainly this feels like a bit of one of those kind of like time sink kind of like it's used to fill time because um, it goes on a bit too long. Yep. Uh, the puzzles are pretty basic, but they're there just to kind of like it feels like repetition is like, right. So we got this switch so we got that switch and then we go back to this switch and then push this thing. And cool. And then dodge a couple of enemies and run around in circles around a table like two or three times. Yep. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's it's fine for what it is for like. We get it. Ashley can't defend herself, so she has to run away. But we—I mean—we could get that in like a cutscene. We don't. We need got it. Five, we already understood minutes. it. Yeah. Like we're carrying yeah. this go around. We understand she can't protect herself. Like it's not. Yeah. She, it's not. Hard. She can't use ladders. She can't use yeah. a gun. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. All right. I made the reference um, to it. Just felt like it was just another Sherry, but Sherry was a child, mm-hmm. and Ashley should have yeah. a little bit more of a <laughs> of a clue of what right. to do. But yeah, just a bit pointless. Yeah. I, I like parts of it. Um, I like the fact, like, of her. This is this is where she like fights the 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 night the monsters. Ghost yeah, the ghost knights. Yeah. Explain it. Go they then. Go they don't, they don't, explain they don't, it. You they like don't. it? Why'd you explain it? Go and help me. No. Anyone no, ever man. seen Ben like, Knobs and Broomsticks? <laughs> That's what's happening it, here. <laughs> it's dumb. It's really dumb. Very dumb I, yeah. I, the only thing I could think is the plagas uh, are inside of the the. Um, Inside of the uh, the armor because that's what we get later. Stretching um, it, he's stretching it. He's stretching. He's stretching. But no, it's definitely, definitely stretching. But no, it's dumb. It's dumb from a story perspective. I like the creep factor. That was that was yeah, the yeah. only time. That. that was the only time in the game that I, I was actually like, oh shit, like I'm tense, like oh shit, I, mm-hmm. I can fuck up right here, you know, like. And it, it felt it, they the way they move, the way they're they're towering over you. I I like those enemies just in terms of aesthetics and yeah. and actually adding to the horror side of uh things yeah there's definitely a couple of moments where i, I ran around the corner and there'd be one you could see it just on the corner it's like oh shit uh, yeah. and i thought that worked really well and like i said the tense factor of that but all in all that entire section could have yeah. been skipped Next up, while in the castle, Leon briefly encounters Ada Wong, a woman from his past who supports him during his mission. Is she a woman from his past? How do we know from this? this you don't this find game? that out from this game. <laughs> Let me tell you. I mean, they're not strangers, but there's no like real knowledge of what they've been through beforehand. From all sense. Leon knows, yeah. is that Ada screwed from, him over. From, at this point, <laughs> Ada screwed him over, the mm-hmm. virus has been dropped, and she mm-hmm. has fallen to her death. Mm, I feel like she might have dropped you a rocket launcher. No, no, no. You know that in OG two. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, you remake sorry. Two. You know that in remake two. You don't oh, know that in OG yeah, two. Yeah, true, true. So yeah. when this story was written, yeah, there's no rocket launcher kick to you by by some mysterious character. Mm-hmm. Like so, at this point, Leon would have been like, all oh he God, says, yeah. all he says is, oh, so it is true. You're working for. I'm like, what about the backstory of where, how the hell you're alive, please? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've. I feel like this only, as somebody who played this first, the only context where this works is if you've only played this first. 100%. <laughs> like, but you're that. only good if you, it, it only makes sense if you played this first. You're like, oh, I assume that she's a mysterious character. Oh, but playing two, it's like, even playing two remake, it's like, oh, okay. Like, what? happened you know there's there's a conversation that's supposed to happen here you know like you had a thing going on something has definitely happened in that five years that we're just not told like exactly obviously i'm again playing the whole devil's advocate because this game needs a lot of devil's advocate yeah um (laughs) it's like you'd assume there's some point where like he's found out she's alive and there's rumors that she's working with wesker and this is the first time that so he's obviously come to terms with the fact that she's alive uh, and this is the first time in five years after finding out she's alive that he sees her. Uh, and it turns out it is true. She's working with Wesker. And that's the only way that I can see this line working, that it is never explained in the game. You would still have more emotions than this. The woman mm-hmm. tries to ki- not kill you, but you, they have their little battle, which I think is really cool. I think it's a nice sequence. And he gives mm-hmm. her the line of like, this is why you use a knife or whatever he says. Yeah. And then just stops. 
You know she's working for the bad guy. You know she's here for ill reasons. Mm -hmm. I get that your mission is only to save the president's daughter, but surely taking her out... You know, even if you're over the fact that you, you, you clearly are into this woman or whatever... There would be more context. It's just no... Mm -hmm. For this moment, this moment needed to be epic. And yeah, the fight, I think, is epic. But the conversation afterwards, it's like those those two have just like... They just finished having sex and having a cigarette afterwards. Like, oh, what are you up to <laughs> later? That's what it feels like. It's just like, jeez. It, it breaks my seen heart. Each other, you haven't seen each other for years. And the last time you saw each other, you thought the other died. Like, yeah. there's not a... Oh my god, what happened? Oh my god, what you know, what's and what's the, going on? What are you doing here? Like what you know? The only reason why I can think they didn't do it was like you said, for anyone who comes in, does that alienate them instantly of like, oh they clearly ever already have a relationship, I should have played the I don't previous know, though, game. Because I don't think it has to, because it I, could just I be don't like think it has to, yeah. Oh my goodness, what are you doing here? I didn't know that you know you were alive or anything. It doesn't have to necessarily go into any detail of their past it just needs yeah. one line of dialogue just one yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just one. Yeah. well i think or it's even just like a five second flashback of her falling is like just him remembering and then he sees her exactly. face for the first time after five years and then just a different cutscene explaining like i can't believe you're alive i think the what reason they couldn't do that is because ps1 game number one this originally mm. came out on gamecube yeah but they do that. Sure. They do that in the in the opening cutscene. They flash back to Resident Evil they 3. They do. You're right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's ah, no reason. That's my whole thing. Shut the hell up. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> like, like, you're you're right. right. The other thing is, like, even still, if you wanted to make it, just make it a cutscene. Like, make it a cut, like, a, a, a thing. So it's like, hey, this is what happened. We have the model of his RPD outfit. Like, why don't we use this to some extent? Like... I just don't, I don't get it. It even, like, doesn't even do nods well. It doesn't nod at all. Nope. And I, I think, like, that would go so far in this game to where, you know, you're, you're, you're appreciating your fans from before and you're not alienating new fans. Like, it's, it's, that's like, okay, that's the tip of the hat. It's not even that, though. No. <laughs> and I this feel like game... that's the bare minimum is just not met. Yeah, sorry. I think I say this game definitely feels like it is that their attempt at just having a clean break uh, in all sections of this game, whether it be like explaining previous stories or anything. Like you say, the last plague has been different from the virus, um, just not like even referencing previous stories. Like again, coming at this game, you wouldn't know who Wesker is. Um, if, nope. Like if you'd not played the mm -hmm. previous games, mm -hmm. he's just a guy that they mention. It's like, all right, cool. Uh, and yeah, it does seem like it was a, a, a an actual attempt by them to just like cut ties with the previous mm -hmm. series. Uh, and I don't know if it is like you said earlier, earlier on, you were mentioning that this feels like the start of a different trilogy. That mm -hmm. it is, it was an intentional, uh, like something that they did intentionally to say, like, mm -hmm. all right, one and th one to three, and Code Veronica was that that Resident Evil story. Now four, five, and six are this story, and then seven and eight, and I'm guessing when nine comes nine. out, whatever that is, yeah. will be their di that different story. Uh, and I, I guess it's just their attempt at writing a different saga, as it were. Just use new characters then. Like, why? Yeah. I don't know. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, why bring Leon back? It feels like they've gone, oh, two was a success. Let's bring Leon mm -hmm. back so that hopefully this will be a success. It will fall the original fans into buying it, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, this is more Leon, when actually it is more Leon in terms of his face, but it's not in terms of the character. The character. You know, I don't know. It just feels like... I, I would love to have known the conversations that went behind it before deciding what this game yeah. was going to be, you know? That's, know. Well, let me let me battle through it. Let me yeah. battle through because we're going yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit long. He battles his way uh, through the castle before killing Salazar. The Salazar fight is fine. I don't think it's mm -hmm. that interesting, like we said beforehand. Uh, afterwards, Leon travels to a nearby island research facility where he continues to search for Ashley. He discovers that one of his former training comrades... You don't know that! Ugh! Jack mm -hmm. Krauser, who was believed to be killed in a helicopter crash two years prior, is responsible for her kidnapping. Ada and Krauser are working with Albert Wesker, for whom both intend to secure a Las Plagas sample form. Now, Krauser's introduction is fire. 
I love Krauser's the Krauser fight. The knife fight I think is absolutely yeah. fire mm. uh, between mm-hmm. Leon and Krauser. I love that fight scene. I died like six times while doing it for the uh, uh, quick, quick time events just so I could watch it. That was the reason why I died. I swear. Of course. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just I I do enjoy the. I enjoyed the fights. I think that's what I can take away yeah. from this game is mm-hmm. the fight scenes are really good in this game. I enjoyed them. Yeah. They're emotional. They make sense. They're action packed. They're, they're, they're good. I enjoyed them. The dialogue before, after and during them. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just not enough. It's like, again, Leo's just seen a training comrade who, if you played the Wii games, went I on a no mission, idea who he was. went on a mission yeah. with him. Like, they've been on a mission before, right? And he's again someone else he's seen that was dead, and there's no emotion. It's like what? And also keep in mind the Wii games came after the uh, way after, not way after, but uh, years after four. Yeah, yeah like yeah. we even we didn't have this information. No. Like it it was it was something that was was very much like a all right here's Krauser. Like imagine, imagine just for a second if that was someone like Nikolai or someone we've seen before, where you actually have some sort of weight, even though Nikolai doesn't really have that tie. But we don't know Krauser's ties. You could, t- you could easily with with the way that this is explained, you could easily make Nikolai tied to Leon. Or mm-hmm. let's let's go back to what I said of the opening scene, pan shot of Leon's house, pans past a couple of photos. One of yeah. them's him and Krauser. Then pans onto Leon, sits down at the couch, watches the news. Just something mm-hmm. of like, who are you? Why are you here? Yeah. Why are you in this game? Why do you exist? You exist yeah. for no reason. Like you, you exist because oh, another American. Cool. All right, we won't trust <laughs> like, this American. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you have all like, scars over your face? What? Yep. Like, give me something. It's another MacGuffin. It's it's what this what this game does a whole ton. It's like it it is the, the for the sake of having something in there, but it doesn't add any sort of emotional weight. I think to it, unless you know like the Dark Side Chronicles stuff. But yeah, even yeah. still, I don't think it's that's, that's uh, Dark Side Chronicles impactful, is trash. But, like it's yeah. like it's good because it gives more context to some things. Exactly. It's not great. It's not great. Let's be no. honest. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I would say about this fight is again, just so we can cover it and move on. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. It was very, and I think this game does it very well in the action set pieces. It reminded me a lot of the uh, earlier Metal Gears, specifically two and three. Yep. In the just the the cutscenes and the the direction of them all, and especially this fight scene, it's got that very Kojima esque direction behind it, and I think that works really well in this game. Um, but again, everything you guys have said about like the lack of development and like explanation about who this guy is and why he's here, why he's covered in scars, any of that, uh, and it's just like a couple of throwaway lines, like "Oh yeah, I, I know him." It's like, cool. "All right, and uh, how?" Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, suspicious of the mercenaries' intents, Sadler orders Krauser to kill Leon, believing that no matter which one dies, he will benefit. After, Kra- after Krauser's fi- a fatal defeat, Leon rescues Ashley, and they remove the last pluggers. Um, the, sorry, the pluggers from their bodies using a, si- a specialized radio therapeutic. therapeutic. Yeah. device. Uh, Leon confronts Sadler and with the help of Ada manages to kill him. However Ada takes the sample from Leon at the, at gunpoint before escaping in a helicopter leaving Leon and Ashley to escape via her jet ski as the island explodes. So action, couple, action and more action. <laughs> couple things to cover here just to, just to get through it. Uh, Krauser's fight. Again. Frustrating fight to me because mm-hmm. it's I've put one piece over here. I've put one piece over there. And I have the final piece. Why would you put the pieces yeah. anywhere? Just keep it in your pocket. Just have right. a key. And like mm-hmm. uh, that part obviously annoyed me. Um, I think to move on to the, the Sadler fight, which Nick saw me play in and just absolutely banging my head against because he is the biggest bullet sponge ever unless you use a sniper rifle and shoot him in the yeah. head. Mm-hmm. He is the worst boss fight in all of Resident Evil. 
I hate that. I hate that boss fight. You're talking about the yeah. Ada one, right? Yeah, yeah. I, the um, Ada. It, there, it is not explained. Yeah, right. I, I, sti- yeah. I still really don't know. Like, even though I I played it and beat it, and I watched you play it and beat it, I still don't know what you're supposed to do. No, I agree. Like at oh, least with other way, other it? game. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Like, we'll get to. We've not even covered yeah. the, in this plot. They've not covered separate ways at all. So, yeah. I'll give you a quick synopsis of separate ways. You play as Ada. You fill in all of the gaps of why the bell rings uh, at the beginning of the game. Uh, and mm-hmm. you see, the one thing I will say that is cool is seeing Leon fight and being mm-hmm. around the mm-hmm. map and being around seeing the world and seeing, and seeing those moments. Even Resident Evil yeah. 6 doesn't do that well. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. So I did think that was actually kind of cool and probably ahead of its time in a way of like, clearly don't interact with this character. Clearly, you are on your own path, but it was cool to see him standing there shooting enemies and stuff like that in separate ways. Separate A's was 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 fine. I, in hindsight, did we need to play it? Hell no. no um, it needs to be made into HD. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get what was up with the cutscenes so, not being in HD. That is something that I looked up, and apparently because it was on PS2... Like it, they would have to re- use because they use. I guess they use the GameCube renders. But even still, like, why don't you just take at least the 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 stuff you've already rendered and then put that in? I don't. But I also don't know game dev, so maybe no. like because they, because they're FMVs. So these ones are FMVs, whereas the original, like the GameCube one, is a part of the actual game in engine. engine. Yeah. Um, I think that's why they couldn't update it, is from from what I understood. Fair enough. Should we get into uh, Did You Know Facts real quick? Let's do it. Uh, Hanukkah, a, uh, we haven't even spoken about Hanukkah, but Hanukkah oh, yeah. has Hanuk- a complete character model despite only appearing in MGS style intercom transmissions with Leon in game. Can I just ask? Who here thinks that Leon can actually see Hunnigan, or can he only hear her? <laughs> no, he can only hear her. <laughs> yeah. Because it looks oh, like I, they're I, having like a full-on like FaceTime before it's time mm-hmm. type thing, and yet That's he always has I it thought. by his ear. No, <laughs> like, he clearly is talking to her, but it's like snakes. That's snakes good. not see It's seeing. like my grandparents trying to FaceTime us and be like, "Sorry, Han, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop showing me your ear." <laughs> Hunnigan has a complete character model, not just a head and other titles such as Half Life Two. Uh, these projects tend to be half a body since there is no need for the mod- to model anything else. Though multiple uh, manipulation. Sorry, manipulation of forced camera, uh, some suited a suit. Thank you, fans mm-hmm. found uh, that Hanukkah did in fact have an early model design for her. Perhaps there's a mod uh, a mod out there somewhere that changes Leon Ada or Ashley into Hanukkah. There you go for that one. The Broken Butterfly reference, which is the magnum in this game, uh, references the film like Sudden that. Impact. The Broken Butterfly is a magnum type gun that can be purchased from the CD merchant, again, another person we didn't mention, you find along your travels in Resident Evil 4. And Capcom snuck a sneaky uh, Sudden Impact reference into its uh, description. It reads, this will make anyone anyone's day, which is a, which is a reference in the line sudden impact where Clint Eastwood, Harry Callan says, go ahead and make my day as if we needed another reason to blow some heads with this high caliber rifle. Go so, ahead, punk. Make my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's dirty hair. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, decapication was removed from the Japanese release. On the topic of heads being separated from their bodies, in the Japanese release of Resident Evil 4, any form of decapitation was removed from the game. This means the zombies or the parasites infected villagers and cultists keep their heads on their shoulders no matter what. It's a weird change, but there's plenty of things that are altered in games depending on where they're released. It's interesting to think of a world in which Leon isn't stomping down innocent bystanders and cutting off their heads to protect the president's daughter. That's an interesting one. Like That fundamentally changes the game and yeah. there is no thinking, need for flash grenades. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. no need for flash grenades at all, really. Mm. So, very weird. I'm sure none of you tried this, but did you know, if you try to look up Ashley's skirt, she will call you a pervert. 
I knew no. that. I knew that because I my yeah, <laughs> one of my friends one of my friends was like, Oh look at this and I'm like, Oh, okay. Like what <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, I mean. Cool. In oh, the original yeah. Resident Evil 4, Leon was rescuing Sherry Birkin from Resident Evil 2. Sherry sense. Birkin, who appeared in Resident Evil 2 and 6, was nearly the main reason for Leon's um, excursion. excursion into parts of the unknown in the fourth installment. However, saving her once more might have been a little repetitive, which Capcom likely thought as well, given the fact that she was her own playable character in Resident Evil 6. Uh, Nonetheless, that explains just why Ashley is so uh, remarkably similar to Sherry, as the former were allegedly going to be the latter. It's somewhat of a leap swapping out an umbrella scientist daughter for the president's. Huh, that does make sense. Mm. Like, why they're similar. Doesn't necessarily make sense story wise, but. <laughs> Nor does Nothing makes in sense. This game. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a story? <laughs> if the player shoots the lake uh, prior to battling their Lego, the monster will lunge at and eat Leon. Did any of you know this yep. one? Yep. No, but I did. I did wonder how ah. you did it because there's an achievement for it. Yeah, you shoot the lake with a, mm -hmm. a gun with a bullet, and it will jump out of the water and eat you. You have to be on the cool dock. Yeah, yeah, you have okay. to be on the dock. Yeah, yeah, you have to be on the dock. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Uh, when fighting the Ganados uh, in the cabin, if you shoot Luis enough, he will retaliate and kill Leon. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that though. Oh, I didn't that know that one either. So. That's even, kinda one, like a, even one that I didn't know. It's kind of like adding uh, the 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 referencing uh, a game that doesn't come out for I think until the, the next year or the following year after that, uh, where like if with uh, I think believe in Dead Rising where uh, you you if you mess up a uh, uh, survivor enough they attack you and they're they you can no longer get them. Oh, I don't. Okay. That's probably not the reference, but I, I was like, yeah, you know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Another one of my favorite series. Let's go into the rankings then, shall we? And uh, the rankings look a little something like this. Uh, Resident Evil Zero, favorite character, Rebecca Chambers, favorite weapon, Magnum, favorite train, uh, favorite location, train. You don't have the Code uh, B stuff on there. Oh, man, I added it in everything. All right, well, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Resident Evil 1, uh, Chris Redfield's our favourite character, favourite weapon, uh, the stun gun, and the favourite location, the mansion. Resident Evil 2, Claire Redfield, favourite weapon, uh, the shotgun, and favourite location, uh, the police station. Resident Evil 3, Jill Valentine is our favourite character, <laughs> favourite weapon being the grenade launcher, favourite location being Raccoon City. Cove Veronica, we chose Claire Redfield as our favourite character, our favourite weapon being the shotgun, and their favourite location being what... Rockford, Rockford Island. Rockford Island. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Mm -hmm. Where do we all sit when it comes to Resident Evil Four, though? When it comes to our favorite character of the series, where do you guys go to? Um, we'll start with you, Shotgun. Ah oh, man, I have one for the other two, but I don't have one for this. I mean, so your choices are Le Leon, Ashley, <laughs> Louise, Ada. Salazar, Mendez, Krauser, Sadler, Wesker, Villagers. Can I go uh, Leon's, Leon's coat. <laughs> uh, Leon's coat. Leon's coat? Nah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say Salazar. I like I like your points where he's kind of like got the the quips and he kind of adds to the the action, uh, the villain, and he's kind of a fun character to be around. Yeah. So I'll say Salazar. Okay. Uh, Deepspawn? Uh, same, yeah. I mean, he's probably the most character with like any actual character behind him. Uh, as you say, he feels like he's got the most fun around him. Uh, as just, just playing any of the scenes he's in is just infinitely more fun to be around. Uh, and yeah, compared to all the other bosses and uh, characters that you come up against or play as, uh, he's definitely one of the most fun. This will be our first enemy as our favourite character. Of the mm -hmm. series, Haley. If you had to pick, who would you go with? Obviously, Ashley. Not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, probably Salazar as well. If you're not gonna let me take the merchant, just for you could be the merchant uh, if you want the merchant <laughs> for your oh, money. Buying. What are you buying? <laughs> merchant. What are merchant you is the heart and soul of the game. Oh, before I'll buy it. Hello, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the merchant just for you. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go with thing they didn't explain, by the way, as well. I don't think that's 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 I, that's I, I actually don't think that needs explaining because that is strictly a gameplay thing. 
And I also love that it's not explained. The one thing I do think, obviously, where this is leading up to Village, I actually think they may explain it in Village, though. Mm Because there's very much, like, in the cutscenes we've seen so far, it's very much like, oh, I know you, Ethan. And it's like, huh, you're not just an NPC here to sell me stuff to be gameplay? Like, what's going on here? So Mm -hmm. very interested to see how they do that. Um, yeah, I'll go with Salazar as well. I do agree with you guys. I think when those cutscenes are on screen, they are the most fun, the most enjoyable. The dialogue is is what it is, but I just I just I enjoy having him around and he he tries his hardest to make this game fun in its story. I like so. how he calls Leon Mr. Scott. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Scott, <laughs> Mr. Scott Kennedy. Yeah. He, he, um, and what's so funny is in a previous episode, I said I did not know that his, his middle name was Scott. And he said and I, so much. I guess I must have totally <laughs> thought, thought, oh, he's just like messing with him, saying Scott Kennedy. And I'm like, now I'm like, oh, shit. Why did I, why did I see that? <laughs> Um, favorite weapon of the game, guys. I got one. I've got mine. I've, I've got mine, but I don't know if I can choose it. Because right, we'll go with you, D Spore. Go on. Uh, well, mine's not part of the main story. Mine's part of the separate ways. The bow gun. Uh, the oh, bow gun. The explosive mine. bow gun <laughs> is the most ridiculously OP weapon in this game, and I love it. Uh, it's yeah, just when you when you finally get that that bow gun, which takes up like nine slots in the inventory, yep. mm-hmm. uh, and each stack of uh, ammo takes up five slots. There's a reason it takes up so much, yeah. because yeah. you can pretty much take out a boss in about five or six shots. Apart uh, from Salazar, just... apart from Salazar, sadly, yeah. I, I, sorry, Sadler, yeah. I literally, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. bitch. Uh, shotgun. <laughs> uh, so this is the first game. Where I actually think a pistol, a pistol is worth a damn. I fucking love the black tail. The black oh, tail is okay. so good, and it's got so much like the rate of fire and the actual, uh, the actual like like a uh, maneuverability of it, and being able to yeah, it's it's just great. I, I love it. <laughs> Haley, again, I quite like the bow gun. Um, it'd either be that or the um, overpowered sh- um, sniper rifle that you had. The Which sniper rifle is really I don't good. Know. Which one are you picking? Well, it depends. Do I have to go with main story? You don't or... have to do it. You haven't got to do nothing. There's no rules. No. The sniper Wait. rifle, probably. And that's what I'm picking. The sniper rifle. The sniper rifle yeah. was my favorite weapon in this entire game. Not the, the not not the auto sniper rifle. Even though that one is way better. I didn't use the auto sniper rifle. The basic bitch sniper rifle looks like a fishing rod. That one. <laughs> I was using that and just popping heads. Like, You're crazy. The whole time. You're the crazy. whole game. The whole, <laughs> yeah. game. the whole game. I was just popping heads. So that's probably why you like it. So, so much better. I know, but there I just were didn't... people that were coming into chat and having nervous breakdowns oh, with the fuming. weapons that he was <laughs> using. They were but... fuming. They're like, if you never played this game before, it's like, yeah, I've beat it many a time. Like, why are you using these weapons? Like, I want to. You kept using me as the <laughs> yeah. yes. Because I can. Yeah. I, uh, do you want the bow? Should we give D spawn the win? Yeah, why not? All right, we'll go with the bow this this time, guys. <laughs> we'll go with the bow. Um, favorite location? I think it's the opening village, personally. I really like the, the scene setting and just like kind of getting the you know you 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 get the scene with the 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 police burning in the fire like and Which kind of setting nothing. up <laughs> i mean it, i feel like it kind of means something just aesthetically yeah uh okay in terms of like setting you in the world and i like the the how claustrophobic it makes you feel um and i like that little area and it's iconic honestly like that's what i think when i think resident evil 4 i quite like the maze area I just like a maze. <laughs> I don't really know what else to... I can't really give you much more. Yeah. I just like the fact that... Said know, by a person that yeah. doesn't play the game clearly. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> hey, look nice. I like yeah. a maze. Have you been in a maze? I don't know. <laughs> I've been in a maze. I don't know. We've said this. I don't know. I don't know. Do you spawn? I like a maze. Um, I was originally torn towards the castle. Um, I think all the interior in that... Like the castle area is really cool. But I, I have to agree with Shotgun that the village is like the most iconic part of the game. It's like it's it's got that initial uh, like uh, claustrophobia. Sorry, um, I think the section with the hard mode in there as well was really good. And all of the like enemy types that it introduces you in the world are all around that area. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a really good yeah 
for, for this game, I think it's the most iconic. The village it is then, guys. Congratulations. All right, guys, here we go. Our rankings so far of the Resident Evil games look like this from bottom to top. Mm. Resident Evil 3 at the bottom. Resident Evil 0 underneath that. Resident Evil Code Veronica above that. Resident Evil 1, then Resident Evil 2. Nick, for you, mm. where would Resident Evil 4 sit on this list? We are not only ranking this game for its story. It is an overall experience. I think for a similar reason how code, I've ranked Code Veronica above zero for story and for the bits of gameplay, I think I'm going to rank it above, rank four above zero below Code V um, because of the gameplay. Because the gameplay is super fun and I, w I do like re replaying it and having the mercenaries mode and all that. Um, so personally, I think that was there. I, I do think that um, something we didn't talk about, I wanted to just touch upon real quick, Thanks. is the 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 troubled development that this had i i, I want to see uh the, the at one point this game was about being in an airship uh and you kind of like going around and there was there was like a hook man like a man with a hook that found like found you i was like i want to see that game at some point and one of the other games became devil may cry um that we didn't talk about but yeah the it's too I, obvious. I that, did you know fact that I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Oh, a hundred percent. I just, I, I very much want to see those versions. But yeah, I think as this, as this game stands, I think above zero is the least I can give it. Despawn. Uh, agreed. Uh, pretty much the same reasons. I think story-wise, drops it really far down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it doesn't fit really well in the whole Resident Evil gambit of stories. Um, but for the gameplay alone, for what it did for the genre of gaming and how it changed and introduced so many new concepts that to this day are still used regularly, uh, I think I'd have to put it again, yeah, between code V and zero. Uh, just because it's... It, yeah. yeah, go on, go on, go on. I was just going to say, because it doesn't have the best of both, it only manages one. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could put it any higher than that because it's a similar reason how I said with Village... Uh, with code V, sorry, that... Um, I loved the story, but the gameplay didn't work for me. This is the opposite. Whereas the gameplay works really well, but the story fails. Almost as if they should just turn Code Veronica into four. Interesting. Mm. We're right. Hayley, where would you go with the game? I feel like the same reason why I put Code Veronica ridiculously high in the last episode, because, again, I don't play the game. I just experience it through watching others play the game i feel like i would probably put four at the bottom of the list personally as a story as someone who doesn't physically play it but because we're looking at it on a no 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 you've got you've got your opinion yeah that's yeah. probably where i would put it to be honest as someone experiencing it from the outside i'm torn if i'm being totally honest because i agree with everything you've both said about why sirens on my end why um they're coming to arrest you for whatever opinion you're about to drop exactly <laughs> <laughs> is it worse than three <laughs> is it better than three it's better than three in gameplay it's not better mm. than three in story like they, they, i don't i don't believe that it's better than three in story even though story of free remake is Missing, it leaves a lot to be desired. Resident Evil 4 has plot holes, has <laughs> doesn't even have plot holes, it has, plot canyons. it has no plot, it has no, <laughs> it's, it doesn't, missing. it's just it's just not there story wise. Um, yeah. and then when we come to Resident Evil Zero, I think, yeah, by a mile, this gameplay plays better than Zero, but no, I can, I'll go with it, I can, I can run with you both, which I think, I think. Putting it below Code V for me is a win. Is a is definitely <laughs> is a definite, and I think being yeah it being being ob speaking objectively, not from my bias Resident Evil <laughs> fandom sort of point of view, I think putting it above zero and three would be fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. so our new rankings will look like this: Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil One, Code Veronica. Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 3. I'm happy. 
Let's plug, plug, plug and get ourselves out of here. We'll start with you, Hayley. Where can people find you? Um, over on Twitter at the Hayley Show 21 Nice. Shotgun, where can people find you? You can find me everywhere at Shotgun McPain. Not good. He didn't do the Max Payne stuff. No. Huh. Oh, he's definitely oh, yeah. got COVID, guys. Also, he definitely I had COVID. That was no, uh, yeah, exactly. This, <laughs> I, uh, this guys, episode. <laughs> I'm just, uh, just a quick introduction. We forgot something. Quotes with notes. Quotes with notes. Yeah, but, oh, but I am so off my game today. You had COVID. But, but, right. Don't worry wait, wait, about wait. it. Don't, Are there any this. quotes? <laughs> Did you even get? I didn't, yeah, there I is. Got a single there is one there is quote that just made three. me go. Oh gosh. Well, there's two. Right, go, quickly, go quickly, quickly. Yeah. Do the song. Do okay. the song. Go. <laughs> notes. 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 We're gonna quote the notes. That was that one was not too as good. Notes, but uh, <laughs> anyways, welcome back to uh, podcast for the podcast. Quote the notes. And right now, I have here two quotes for you. Uh, if I will, uh, despawn. I'm gonna actually have you go first, um, okay. as to not steal your thunder. Okay. So the first quote, I actually have a couple as well, but the first quote is probably the first quote in the game. Where's everybody going? Bingo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that one, I love it so much. It's so dumb. So bad. So Resident bad. Evil Four. Yeah. Bingo edition. <laughs> it does set the tone yeah. for what it is. You know, like the, the, the quippy, the quippy. Uh, There's no um, quippiness in this game. Stop it. No, oh, I mean, have you heard the line? I will send my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off. It might do. <laughs> you don't know. I it's mean, just so funny. I don't know what the last plague does. Uh, uh, anything and else? Then, uh, um, I have uh, when they're jumping in the the waste, uh, the trash thing. It's like, no way, no way, Leon, way. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one Should final quote for you, which mm. is uh, just before the horde board starts, uh, from Luis. Uh, I see the president has equipped his dart with ballistics. Ah, uh, that you're right. <laughs> you know what? That's the best line of the whole game. <laughs> That's the best line. And then she's like, ooh. And she's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> Despawn, where can people quiet. find you? They can find me everywhere on socials at Paul Despawn or on twitch.tv forward slash Despawn Games. <sighs> Thank you all for watching once again. I appreciate it. Sorry we had to slug through this one. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. If you made it to the end, let us know in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. You can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. And until next time. Resident Evil 5 is upon us, people. We've hit we've hit the bad games. Like officially. <laughs> uh, until next time, we will love you, leave you, and see you all later. Goodbyes. Bye.